The word binomial just means two numbers. When mathematicians talk about a binomial expression, they usually mean that the numbers are added up. We'll call our numbers A and B for the moment. A binomial series is what you get when you take A plus B, a binomial expression, and raise it to a power. We'll call the power n. To actually see the details of the series, we would have to do bracket expansion of the powers. In part one of this presentation, I'm going to concentrate on the situation where n is a positive whole number or possibly zero. Remember the notation for whole numbers. It's the set z of integers. If we want to specify positive integers, we could put a little plus on the z. And to include the number 0, we have to write that as a union with the set containing 0. Hence, we could write the following. The symbol to the right of n here means belongs to. z plus is the set of positive integers, and we've added in the extra little piece containing 0. Another way of writing this would be simply to list some of the numbers and then use dots to show that the pattern continues. Something like this. I now want to consider some values of n. If n is 0, we have a plus b to the power 0. Zero. 0th power of any number is always 1. If n is 1, we just have a plus b. And if n is 2, we have a plus b squared. This is the first time we would ha actually have to expand brackets. The expansion is fairly familiar. I've started writing these out on the next page. As we include higher and higher n's, the expressions get more and more complicated. But when you've been doing it for a while, you start to remember a few of them. For the cube, we have a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. For the fourth power, we have the following expression. Let's start to look at the structure that's occurring here. Notice how as we move from left to right, a starts with the highest possible power with no b's, and then the power of A gradually reduces, while the power of B increases correspondingly. We end up with only B's at the end. Notice how the sum of the powers of A's and B's always comes to the original value N. Look at the 4A cubed B term, for instance. A has power 3, B has power 1. 3 plus 1 is 4. That's the N for this expansion. I want to now code this piece of information into a general structure for the terms in this series. Remember that a reduces its power from n gradually. So let's write n minus r, while correspondingly b increases. And the sum of powers must be n. A general term in the series therefore has the form a to the power n minus r, b to the r, and we gradually let r change from 0 through 1 until it reaches n. That gets all the right kind of terms in the series. We still have to account for those numbers though. 1 and 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. What can we say about those? Well, on the next page I've taken these numbers, all the coefficients of the powers of a and b, and written them out in a rather suggestive pattern. Here it is. They're in the form of a triangle. Notice there are 1's all the way down the sides of the triangle. But look at that 2. 2 is the sum of the two numbers diagonally above it, 1 plus 1. 3's are both the sums of the numbers diagonally above themselves, 2 plus 1. 6 is the sum of 3 plus 3. Turns out this is a general pattern for powers of binomials. So it would now be possible to write down the next row for n equals 5, even though we haven't actually done the expansion of brackets. 1 and 4 is 5, 4 and 6 is 10, 10, 5, 1, and so on for 6. This triangle has been known for quite a long time. Many mathematicians knew about it, but one very prominent mathematician was the Frenchman Pascal. For that reason, this shape is known as Pascal's Triangle.
Pascal's triangle is a very useful device for generating these numbers, but it would be even better if we actually had a formula to generate them. Binomial expressions have occurred throughout mathematics for a long time. One important area where they appear often is in the subject of probability theory. In probability theory, we have coefficients known as n choose r, and written n c r. The NCRs are in fact just the numbers from the Pascal triangle. Of course, so far this is just a piece of notation. We need an expression for what is the NCR. NCR in probability is the number of ways of choosing R objects from a selection of N. It turns out that the formula is N factorial divided by R factorial and by N minus R factorial. If you don't know about the factorial notation, or what it means, then you should go and look at the screencast on this particular notation. My ultimate plan is to use the information that we've got so far on the binomial series and put it into the form of a summation symbol. Before doing that though, I'd just like to demonstrate to you that this expression for NCR really does work. Let's focus on the item 6 in the middle of the triangle. That's the coefficient of a squared b squared in the expansion of a plus b to the power 4. Let's compare the term a squared b squared with a to the power n minus r b to the r. It's clear that if n is 4, then here in this term r must be 2. So we should be looking at the coefficient 4c2 to see if it comes to 6. Our factorial expression says that it should be 4 factorial over 2 factorial and then n minus r, that's 4 minus 2, is again 2 factorial. Expanding gives us 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 divided by 2 times 1 and 2 times 1 again. Simplifying gives 3 times 2 which is indeed 6. That agrees with the coefficient that we found in the expansion. The NCRs work always for binomial expansions. Well, at this point we now have all the information necessary to write down a binomial series in the very succinct form of a summation using the sigma notation. I've started to write that here but I want to talk my way through setting up the notation. The general term in the series has the form a to the power n minus r and b to the power r. We need to start with a to the power n, so r had better start being zero. By the time we finish the series we need no a's and we need b to the power n. That will happen when r has reached the value n. We're almost there, it just remains to put on the right coefficients. But we know what those are. They are the n choose r coefficients. Hence we have now the summation form for our binomial series. Notice that when r reaches n, the series stops. When we have whole number positive n, our series is finite. As soon as we move away from whole number n we will find a very different situation. There we will be in the realm of infinite series. To prepare for that situation which we will discuss in the second part of this screencast I'd like to just move away from the notation of using a and b now. The expression a plus b to the n could if we wanted have a taken out as a factor. It would have to have an nth power on it. That leaves us with 1 plus b over a to the power n. All the information that we are interested in about the structure of the series is contained in that expression 1 plus b over a to the n. The extra a to the n to the left is pretty irrelevant. If we change the name of b over a and call it x, 
then from now on we will be looking at series of the form 1 plus x to the power n. Studying such a series will contain all the information that we want to know about binomial series. And it turns out to be very convenient to be able to start with the number 1. I'm going to stop here. In part 2 we will start looking at n equals negative 1. You may find that's a very familiar series, the geometric series. Once we've studied that series a little again, we'll move on and call, it, call n a general number. It can be a half, a third, minus 2, pi, any number you like.